the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 348 1 Timothy 1 to 6 The Attitude of God's Workers Paul, who devoted himself to the church for all his life, left the painstaking advice for Timothy, his spiritual son, who was to read the church after him. First point. In the entire New Testament, the divide between the first and second generation of the gospel era is made by the instant of the great fire of Rome. Following on from the four letters Paul wrote in prison, we come to the letters he sent to his sons in faith. Paul, as the first generation of the gospel era, wrote to the second generation. Timothy and Titus. The letters are 1 Timothy, Titus, and 2 Timothy. The first and second generation of the gospel era is divided by the instant of the great fire of Rome that occurred in AD 64. The first generation gospel era began from the point of Jesus' cross through to the great fire of Rome in AD 64. And these were the people who were with Jesus during his public life and witnessed Jesus' resurrection. Furthermore, these were the people who spent 30 years fighting against the Sanhedrin assembly. The reason why the first and second generation was separated is because in AD 64, Emperor Nero carried around 200 first generation leaders following the great fire of Rome. The second generation were the Christian leaders who worked from AD 64 onwards. Through to the time, St. John was exiled to the island of Patmos. They were the ones who received the gospel from the first generation, such as Timothy, Titus, Mark, Apollos, Epaphroditus, Tychicus, Onesimus, and so on. All of these people fought against the persecution of the Roman Empire. Timothy was there when Paul tried to figure out how to make arrangements for the second generation. Timothy was Paul's son in faith and an invaluable co-worker to Paul. Second point, Paul taught Timothy how to become a minister. In Paul's first letter to Timothy, he taught him about what a church is by outlining two points. The first of the two was that the church was made up of a person or people that believed in Jesus Christ. They made the body of Christ. The second was the organization of the church. This concerned setting up the elders and workers of the church. Paul taught Timothy about the role of the minister. Furthermore, Paul advised Timothy to be careful of fool's teachings. Paul stressed that the core of fool's teachings came from the teachers of the law. Paul went on to teach Timothy that the laws were there to help us realize our sins. As such, Paul taught his loving son in faith to be cautious of false teachers. Paul then told Timothy about his testimony, followed by teachings of the necessary attitude of ministers. First, Paul confessed to Timothy of his past days and testified that he was forgiven by Jesus and thus, Timothy should be like Paul in accepting Jesus' mercy. Second, Paul taught Timothy to fight the righteous fight and to live by faith and good deed. Third, Paul taught to be cautious of false and evil teachers. We can see that Paul did his best to prepare Timothy for what was to come. Paul knew the difficulties of Timothy's job more than anyone else. Thus, Paul did his best to thoroughly teach, advise, and warn Timothy. Third point, Paul taught Timothy about the importance of praying for others. 
Paul continued to teach Timothy about the importance of praying for others. The reason we were to pray for others was because Jesus prayed for us. Paul told Timothy to pray for the community, especially for those in higher positions with greater responsibilities. And for the church members, they were also to pray for their community and for the church and to do their best to establish the best community possible. Each had an obligation to work hard for the kingdom of God. First point, Paul taught that the qualifications and determination to fulfill an official position in church was more important than the status itself. Paul continued to teach Timothy how to be a good minister. The next topic concerned the overseers and the deacons in the church. The first concerned the overseers. The second concerned the deacons. Next, Paul revealed the reason and purpose for his first letter to Timothy. Paul wished for Timothy, who was ministering in the Ephesians church, to also learn about the church and to spread the gospel with the incredible secret and power of the gospel. Paul once again stressed to Timothy to be careful of false teachers. Paul wrote that holiness did not come from keeping a pure way of life, but from believing in God and praying to God. Thus, Paul told Timothy to implement these teachings and to dedicate himself to his given position. Fifth point, Paul taught Timothy about the attitude a minister was to have towards the elderly, the widow, the elders, and so on. Paul's teachings to Timothy continued, and the next topic regarded the attitude he was to have within the church. The first was to treat the church members as his family. The second was to give proper recognition to the widows who were in need. But if the widow had children or grandchildren, they were to be cared by their own family, so as to focus care on true widows in need. Thirdly, the elders were to be respected and taken care of financially. Next, Paul wrote about his concerns for Timothy's health. Following on, Paul wrote about a very cautious topic in the church, which concerned those with status and servants. This concerned slavery amidst the police of the Roman Empire. First, servants were not to rebuke their masters if their master was yet a non-believer. Second, servants were to be respectable to their masters as brothers in Christ if their master was a believer. These were the teachings that were to be taught to the church members with slave status at the time. Paul once again stressed to Timothy to be careful of false teachers. Paul then closed his letter by first telling him to fight the righteous fight. Second, he advised Timothy to enable the rich to use their fortune well. Third, he was always to be cautious of false teachers. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tong Doc Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does. The way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation. One story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tong Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life. 
365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.